Ayo, oh my god, hi! Long time no see, you're looking so well. Welcome to episode six of Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. That would be me. I know, I know, it's been over a week since I posted. I'm so sorry if that worried any of you. As you guys know, I fell behind after my Q&A and I just have not been able to catch up. I basically decided that I needed to skip posting last Friday buckle down and spend the whole week creating art until I got caught up. It was a long weekend. I am exhausted, but I am proud to say I got caught up. Not just caught up, I got ahead. Yes, I already have next week's video recorded, ready to edit, and I've got a bonus video coming your way. So be sure to look for that. Yes, your girl got stuff done. I knew if I was gonna miss a week, I had to make it worth my while and yours. Anyways, this is all very exciting stuff, but we need to get back to business. We have four prompts to tackle this week, so enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. Okay, for our first prompt this week, create a growth chart. Figure out a way to show some kind of growing process. I'm gonna start with decorating the page. As I'm sure y'all have noticed, I tend to have beef with a lot of the little prompt doodles in these books, but I actually love this one. It's a keeper. Just coloring in the little potted plants with some greens and browns and drawing in some arrows in this big circle because for this page, I will be drawing the life cycle of a frog. I think frogs definitely have one of the most remarkable growth and transformation processes. This little lady frog will start out her life's journey as a tiny gel-like egg. Consider this like the stage of a human fetus in utero. From the egg, she hatches as a tadpole, a fish-like creature with gills and a long tail for swimming. You know, she actually eats her own egg after she hatches. It's her first protein-packed meal. <laughs> this is like the infancy stage. She will then sprout back legs and now be referred to as a tadpole with legs. Wow, who thought that one up? This is the childhood stage. For now, this little lady is still an herbivore, munching on sea plants and algae. And although she has sprouted front legs, they remain inside the body, wiggling under the skin. <laughs> so weird. Now next, she becomes a froglet. Here, she goes through a lot of changes. Her front legs emerge. Her head broadens and develops that frog-like mouth. Her tail starts to reabsorb into her body. And now she starts hunting insects. Hello, fellow carnivore. This stage with so many changes can be compared to human adolescence. The teen stage. Oy. Then she gets a little bigger, loses the tail altogether, and starts breathing with lungs instead of gills. And voila! She's a full-grown adult frog ready to lay some eggs and start the process all over again. Or just never have eggs and instead focus on her career because she's a power frog. <laughs> I'm using watercolor for these little frogs. Definitely needed to do some custom mixing to get all those shades of that perfect brownish green color. If you're wondering about the little conversation bubbles, I thought it would be cute to give each frog in each stage a little cliche saying that would correspond to their age. Don't worry, you'll see it all come together in the end. I think my favorite part of painting these were definitely the spots and adding the texture. Like they started coming into their slimy little selves and I just loved it. Juicy highlight time. And juicy they were. <laughs> it's time to Mod Podge. And cut them out and glue them onto our chart. Now for these little axioms, the eggs, well, they don't say anything, they're eggs. <laughs> the tadpole, our infant, can only say Wah! The tadpole with legs, the child, she's doing the classic Mom, mom, mommy, mama, mommy, mom, ma. Mom, mommy, mommy, mama, mama, mama. What? Hi. <laughs> As for the froglet, the teen, she's saying this is so lame, bruh. And the adult frog, like me. I'm too young for my knees to hurt this bad. Hashtag truth. And that finishes up this page. Frogs really are awesome creatures. So as a kid, my sister got a kit where she was able to grow her own frogs from tadpoles. And I think I enjoyed watching them change more than she did. But the process was so profound, kind of miraculous. 
I don't know. It always stuck with me. So I'm super glad I got to give Mother Nature the little nod she deserves on this one. Next up, we have create a collection. Start a collection. Document it here. Draw it, photograph it, or attach it to the page. Let's also start with the prompt on this one. I want to make it look like the classic message in a bottle. Now, I'm not a collector at all. I would describe myself as the anti-hoarder. I really don't form emotional attachment to tangible things, so I'm constantly getting rid of things, never collecting them. That being said, if I was to one day start a collection, I imagine it would be a creepy collection of curiosity jars. You know, where you get to display the little oddities and things that spark curiosity. Specimens, cadavers, antiques, relics, taxidermy, and so on. I have my sketches. Let's skip through the liner. All right, all right. And now for the color. Let's start with this display scorpion. Ugh, so creepy. I could stare at stuff like that for hours. Analyzing the intricacies of the exoskeleton. It's just wow. I also did this jar of baby doll parts. This was the last one I drew, and honestly, I had kind of run out of ideas, but I feel like I've definitely seen that in a lot of horror movies. And yeah, it's creepy and weird, so why not? This one is my favorite. I love octopi, and I was just enthralled with the reference picture I had for this one, so I could only imagine what seeing it in person would be like. Being able to so closely look at those tiny suction cups, oh my gosh. Fascinating. Now onto the next page, we've got three more jars. The first one is a rat skull adorned with twigs and moss and stones and all of that. I'm also quite taken with any sort of skeletal display. It is so cool to see how many organisms are so alike and yet so different on our most basic structural level. Gosh, I'm sounding creepy even to myself now. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, everyone knows I have an obsession with teeth. I was going to just do a jar of loose teeth, but uh, I actually maybe possibly perhaps already have one of those just sitting with a candle in my bathroom. If you have to ask, they are all fakes. Cody has collected them from work. We share our passion for teeth. I mean, it's what brought us together. <laughs> Anyways, I opted to change it to a set of old dentures instead. Is it even physically possible to fit a set of dentures into this particular jar? Nope, not a chance. But whatever, whatever, I draw what I want. And the last, a more nature-inspired forest jar with some mushrooms and a beautiful butterfly. Also had to throw some foliage in there. It's so cool, these jars can almost be just like mini dioramas. Add a few juicy highlights to the batch. Mod Podge. Cut them out. And glue them into the book. And that completes my collection. An assortment of the strange, creepy, and fascinating. This is right up my alley. I honestly might actually look into starting this one up. I think they would display quite nicely on my film wall where I do my intros. Hmm, food for thought. Okay, on to the next. Create a refusal. Choose one page's instructions in this book to ignore. Indicate your refusal by cutting out the instructions void box and attaching it to the page that you wish to refuse. And then it gives you space to draw your symbol of refusal in the box below. Well, I'm going to start by doing one of my favorite things. Taping off the edges and painting the page black. So here's my dilemma with this prompt. I love that Mariah added it in here. Not every prompt is going to speak to every person. And I'd be lying if I said that there weren't pages that I have no interest in completing. However, I have set the goal for myself to finish all three books in their entirety. Part of the challenge is to push creativity with the prompts that don't necessarily instantly spark it. Sometimes great art is created through them. So with that being said, I am refusing to use my refusal. I thought it would be fun to decorate the page with the corner of a Ouija board with the Ouija planchette hovering over the word no. Like nope, uh-uh, no way, I simply refuse. Lettering is always pretty tricky, but I was super happy with how this one turned out. That almost never happens. Usually I'm happy with the picture, but feeling like anything I've written just doesn't measure up. I really should practice more with lettering so it's not such a weak spot of mine. Anyways, I used my gold gel pen to accent the planchette with some fancy shimmer designs. And with the board done, I moved on to these two little banners that I want to add to the page. On the first, I wrote, Don't be a quitter! 
a reminder to myself that utilizing this page would be me essentially giving up on my own goal. And then I refuse to refuse, again stating what I'm trying to do here. Who am I trying so hard to convince? All of you or myself? <laughs> Mod Podge it, cut them out, and back to the prompt page. Let's zhuzh it up with a little orangey gold to match the board. Sign and date, and glue everything in. As a bonus, I added my symbol of refusal, another banner, but this one says, if you're reading this, it means I failed. I am not trying to take a jab at anyone who actually uses this page. I'm just saying that since I have taken a stance not to use it as part of my own personal challenge that I've set forth for myself, if I do end up using it, I have failed my challenge. Okay, all in all, this page is on the simpler side, but I love it. And just like that, we've arrived at the final prompt of the week. Create a bumpy page. Lay this page over a textured or bumpy surface. Try to write or draw something. For this one, I decided to take my page and a black colored pencil and lay it over my fridge, which is quite textured, and just go to town rubbing with the pencil to capture that texture. I felt like I was starting to get an idea, so I went over it all a second time with silver colored pencil. Here's what it looks like up close. Do you see what I see? Probably not, but I felt like it reminded me a lot of old TV static. Anyone younger than a millennial is probably confused right now. Anywho, TV static made me think of one thing right away. The ring. So on this side, I decided to use my white Posca to write. She never sleeps. I tried to write kind of squiggly as if it was written on a bumpy surface, but it just looks kind of sloppy. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say the lettering is usually my weak spot. No, oh well. Add a little shadow and some color, well, gray, <laughs> to the prompt. Whittle Mad Podge. And now we can get to the better part of the art. I had to capture the iconic scene of Samara emerging from the TV set, soaking wet, ready to kill. If you saw that scene and that didn't scare the ever living out of you, I mean, I don't know, perhaps you should seek help. I was definitely that person screaming in the theater, ah, hell no! Nah! <laughs> I tried to keep the background simple. She needs to be the focus. Added a few highlights for that dripping wet effect. Yeah. Okay, now I want that same TV static effect on this side. So it's back to the refrigerator. Mod Podge. Glue her in. And there it is. My little tribute to one of my favorite horror films. I'm just glad the fridge made the texture it did because this worked out so well. I can't say enough how much I love this. Now let's do our recap of the week. We created a growth chart showing all the life stages of a frog, from egg to tadpole to froglet to adult, with each saying a little ism that relates to their age. Possibly my favorite of the week. I just love it. We created a collection. My many oddity jars to adorn a creepy cabinet of curiosity. Some are grotesque. Some are weird, some are beautiful, but all are fascinating and bound to spark some curiosity. I freaking love these. We created a refusal. A page intended to allow me to refuse to complete any other page, when in fact I used it to refuse this one. <laughs> I love the Ouija iconography, so this one just tugs at my heartstrings, as simple as it is. And lastly, we created a bumpy page laying the page over my fridge to capture a bumpy texture, which ended up looking like TV static, sparking the idea to draw Samara from the ring in one of the most spine-chilling scenes I've ever seen in a horror movie. Wow, another great week where I was pretty much happy with everything. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye!